Just how much criminal activity does a president have to be involved in before impeachment becomes a serious possibility? Apparently, quite a bit. It seems it wasn't enough when the Obama administration got caught sending thousands of weapons to Mexican drug cartels during Operation Fast and Furious. Weapons that were used in crimes on both sides of the border and which resulted in hundreds if not thousands of deaths. Apparently it wasn't enough that Obama has claimed the right to kill US citizens with drones both in the United States and abroad. Or that he's already exercised this power in the assassination of Anwar al-Awlaki and his 16-year-old son, neither of whom were involved in any terrorist activity. Seems it wasn't enough when Obama signed the NDAA of 2012 and 2013 giving the military the right to detain anyone anywhere indefinitely without trial. Apparently it wasn't enough that Obama used American forces to topple the Libyan government without so much as asking for permission from Congress. It wasn't enough that they've been running drone strikes all over Africa and the Middle East killing thousands of innocent civilians. If there was any real justice in America, these wouldn't just be grounds for impeachment, they would be grounds for life behind bars. No matter how you cut it, Obama is a mass murderer. But even now, with all the attention on the Benghazi cover-up, the IRS scandal where the government has admitted that it used the IRS to target political activists, and the AP scandal where the Obama administration has been caught seizing phone records of journalists, Congress is still non-committal and lukewarm when it comes to talking about impeachment. Some, like Senator McCain, have gone so far as to say that such calls are, quote, not serious. Here's the reality of the matter. The Republicans aren't going to push for an impeachment of Obama any more than the Democrats were willing to push for an impeachment of George W. Bush. In fact, they will do everything in their power to avoid having it come to that. The reason is simple. These clowns are on the same team. They work for the same corporations. The party lines are just for show. The American political system is like the World Wrestling Federation. Yes, they'll smash chairs over each other's heads. Yes, they'll throw a few choreographed punches and carefully timed pile drivers. But at the end of the night, they'll all hang out backstage together drinking Budweiser and snorting crystal meth. Okay, well maybe they don't all drink Budweiser, but you get the point. If you want Obama impeached, you're going to have to stop operating under the illusion that Congress is acting in good faith and that the two parties have fundamentally different agendas. These guys are just as dirty and just as corrupt as Obama. They're not going to move towards impeachment unless they feel themselves to be in danger. Those who intend to contact their congressmen and senators should keep that in mind. These people need to understand that you are taking down their names, addresses, and photos, and that you will consider their inaction an act of treason. The government needs to fear the people. That's the only thing that can hold them in check. For those of you on the left who still think that this is a partisan issue and that undue attention is being placed on the Obama administration, let's be clear. Bush and Cheney should have been impeached, and they still deserve to be arrested and tried for war crimes. If you were judging Obama by the same criteria that you judged Bush, then you would be pushing for Obama's impeachment yourself. Any liberal who defends Obama at this point is exposing themselves to be a hypocrite. In world news, this week Russia's counterintelligence agency says it caught a CIA officer trying to flip a Russian operative. The accused American, Ryan Christopher Fogel, was a career diplomat working as the third secretary of the political section of the American Embassy in Moscow. He apparently offered 100,000 US dollars down payment and a million dollars a year plus bonuses to the Russian operative on the condition of his long-term cooperation. This seems to be a return to Cold War era spy game tactics only with a dumb and dumber twist to it. Maybe they'll make the story into a full-length film and Jim Carrey can play the lead role. In science news, American researchers have found a way to infect mosquitoes with a bacteria that attacks a malaria parasite, effectively making them incapable of carrying the disease. The bacterial infection is contagious and has been shown to be transmitted to mosquito offspring for at least 34 generations, which was the total number of generations studied. About 660,000 people die worldwide each year from malaria. In financial news, Federal Reserve Chief Ben Bernanke has hinted that he may not seek reappointment for a third term, meaning that he will likely step down this next January. He'll be leaving before the full consequences of his quantitative easing policies set in. Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner is also set to step down in January, leaving the two most influential jobs in the U.S. government related to the economy vacant at the same time. Seems the rats are jumping ship. For those interested, oil is currently selling at 94.16 a barrel, gold is currently at 13.94 an ounce, and silver is at 22.55 an ounce. If this is a message you feel the public needs to hear, then be sure to like, favorite, and share this video through as many avenues as possible. If you want more videos like this, be sure to subscribe to this channel, Storm Clouds Gathering, on YouTube. For updates and bonus content, follow us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash stormcloudsgathering, on Twitter at Collapse Updates, and our website stormcloudsgathering.com.